In this video, you're going to learn how to graph the greatest integer function involving transformations. And we're going to go through 10 examples together. We'll start easy and we'll get a little bit more challenging as we go. So let's dive in. The first thing we want to do is kind of look at the notation here. Like you see these double brackets? That represents the greatest integer function. And what the greatest integer function does is it rounds down to the uh, previous integer. So what I mean by that is like, say for example, if we had zero, this would stay at zero. If we had like 0.5, this would round to zero. You always round to the left on the number line to that uh, integer. So like think about like a number line right here. So say if this is a 0.999, it's still going to be zero. And then one, it would stay at one. If you were at 1.5, rounds to one. See, it's always rounding to the left on that number line. Uh, 1.99999, it's still going to be 1. Normally when we have like a 0.5, you know how you round up, you'd say, oh, 1.5 will round up to 2, right, if it's 5 uh, tenths or higher. But here it's always rounding basically down or, or to the left on the number line. So this is 2, this would be 2. One of the ones that students sometimes make a little bit of a mistake with, say if you had negative 3.1, this would actually round to negative 4. Because like say here's negative 4, here's negative 3, Negative 3.1 is right here, you round to the left, and that's going to be negative 4. So greatest integer function, this is also sometimes referred to as the step function, and you'll see why when we graph these points here on this graph. So 0, 0, that's going to be right here at the origin. 0. 0.5 is going to be 0, so you're right here. 0. 0.99, you're 0. As soon as you get to 1, okay, there's an open circle here, and it jumps up to the next step or stair. See, 1 is 1. 1.5 is 1, 1.99 is 1. As soon as we get to 2, it's open here. It jumps up to the next stair. So what you'll notice here, as you make a few of these uh, steps or stairs, it's always going to be closed on the left, open on the right. And once you get a few stairs, you can kind of repeat that, that process. Okay, So that's your step function or your greatest integer function. Okay, Now talking about the transformations, say you wanted to graph y equals 2 okay, times the greatest integer of x. Well, what, is the th what do you think this 2 does to the graph? <clears throat> well, notice it's not grouped with the x. It's in front. It's going to multiply all the y values by 2. This is a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. So if you know the basic step function, the basic graph, you can say, well, instead of like jumping up to 1 here, now it's stretching. This stair here is going to be at 2. Instead of this one being at 2, it's going to be at 4. So we're pulling it or stretching it in the vertical direction. So this is going to be like this. Then it's going to jump up to 2. Then it's going to jump up to 4. Okay, and this is going to be over here at negative 2, negative 4, etc. So a vertical stretch. Now for number 3, we've got y equals x plus 2. Now notice that's inside of those double brackets, okay? When it's grouped with the x, we know it's affecting the x coordinates, the horizontal direction. But it has the opposite effect. The plus 2 is actually going to shift everything to the left too. So if we know our basic graph like this, we can shift it left too. So this is actually going to start right here at uh, negative 2. So this is going to be right here. Okay, and open on the right. Now it's going to go up from there. Okay, so everything's just shifting left 2. And once you get a few steps here, you can kind of repeat that, that process. Okay, let's go to number 4 now. So this one we have y equals the greatest integer uh, function of x, minus 3. What do you think the minus 3 does? Well, it's not grouped with the x. Okay, that means it's going to affect the y values, and it's going to have the same effect. So the minus 3 is going to shift everything down 3. Again, the way I like to remember, if it's grouped with the x, it affects the x values, but it has like the opposite effect. If it's not grouped with the x's, it has the same effect, and it affects the y coordinates, or the y values. So minus 3 is actually going to shift everything down 3. So again, going back to our parent function, our basic uh, core function here, this step right here is going to shift down 3. So 1, 2, 3. It would start down over here. Okay, so that's going to be 1, 2, 3. Let's see, 1, 2, 3 right here. So it starts here like that, and it goes up from there. Both directions. You can keep going for forever and ever. Okay, so for number 5 now, what do you think this negative does in front of this greatest integer function? Well, again, it's not grouped with the x. That means it's going to affect the y values. It's going to make all the y values the opposite sign. When the y's are the opposite sign, it reflects over the 
x-axis. So reflection over the x-axis. Again, referring to our parent function, we can say, okay, this is on the x-axis, so that's going to stay right where it's at. Okay, close on the left, open on the right. But this stair here is going to reflect over. It's going to be down here now, so it's going to be right here. And you can see the pattern uh, after that point. You can kind of just repeat the process, right? Okay, awesome. So let's take a look at five more examples. Okay, if you're getting the hang of these, go ahead and pause the video and try and do some of these on your own. And we'll go through them together. For number six now, we've got y equals negative x. See how that negative is grouped with the x? It's inside those double brackets. What do you think that negative uh, does to the graph? Well, when it's grouped with the x like that, it's making all the x values the opposite, which is going to reflect this over the y-axis. So this stair or step here is going to reflect. It's going to look like this now. Okay. Uh, this one here is going to reflect. It's going to look like, uh, let's see, it's going to be like this uh, right here. Okay. And once you kind of get the pattern, you, okay, this one here is going to reflect like this. You can repeat it and, and you got it. Okay. So pretty easy. So reflection over the uh, y-axis. Now for number seven, we've got y equals one-half x. Again, notice the one-half is grouped with the x inside those double brackets. What do you think the one-half does to the graph? Well, remember we said when it's grouped with the x, it affects the x values, but it has like the opposite effect. What I mean in this case is we're actually going to be multiplying the x values by the reciprocal, which is two. So this is actually a horizontal stretch by a factor of two. Now a lot of times students will say, Mario, I see the one half, shouldn't it be a horizontal shrink? Well, again, remember it's the opposite when it's grouped with the x. One way to think about this is in order to get the same y value, x now has to be twice as large. And that's what's causing that stretch horizontally. So what you can do, if you, again, if you know your parent function here, you can see these stairs are going to be twice as long. It's going to be like this. It's going to go all the way here to 2. Then it's going to jump up. This is going to go all the way here to 4. Then it's going to jump up to the next stair. So horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. Okay, for number uh, 8 now, we've got the same scenario except for it's 2x. This is actually going to divide the x's by 2, or you can think about it as multiplying by 1 half. It's a horizontal shrink. So uh, this one now, the stairs are only going to be half as long, so they're going to go to a half, then it's going to jump up, okay, to 1, and then it's going to go here, it's going to jump up. So each of these stairs is half as long in the horizontal direction, and you can repeat that process, okay, for your step function. Okay, for number 9 now, a little bit more challenging, what do you think is happening here? We've got this 3, we've got this 1, we've got this 2. Well, the 3 is going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. So normally the stairs are going up 1 each time. Now they're going to go up to 3, then to 6, then to 9, like that. The minus 1 is grouped with the x. It's going to affect the x values left and right. This is actually going to have the opposite effect. It's going to go positive 1 or right 1 and up 2. Now one way to think about this is you could think about shifting the origin. Like I could think of my new starting point as right one up two, kind of like, I'll draw this as a dashed or dotted line, right here. We could think of this as our origin. We know what our parent function looks like. It starts right here. But then it's going to jump up one, two, three, okay, like that. And then same thing here down, one, two, three would be like right here. One, two, three, like that. So that's that one. And for number 10, this one is kind of a challenging problem. Now, if you were just trying to describe the transformations, you're actually going to say that this is shifting right one followed by a horizontal shrink of a factor of one half. Now, you might be saying, Mario, why isn't it the other way? Why isn't it a horizontal shrink by one half and then shift right one? Well, it has to do with the composition of functions. Like, if you started off with a function that was like this, and I'm going to point you to another video that you can watch if you're interested in transformations, uh, and I'll put that at the end of this video. If it was like this, and then I had another function that said uh, g of x equals f of 2x, I would go ahead and then replace x with 2x, and I would get this function. So you say, well, what came first? I shifted right 1, 
Then I did a horizontal shrink by a factor of one half. Another video I did talking about the transformations. Go ahead and follow me over to that video right there to learn more about that and uh, we'll get some more practice. I'll see you there.